Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I am Jamila and I love all things beauty, I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay, if this makeup looks familiar, it is cause it is. <laughs> I don't know when this video is going up y'all, so... I don't know why I'd be telling you all these things because it'd be out of order as hell. But anyways, I'm wearing the new Sydney Grace Unbreakable Bond Palette. There will be a full first impressions video on this. I'm also wearing another product that they released and or will release <laughs> on the 27th. So that will be up soon or before or after this, whenever this goes. It will be somewhere. Oh my gosh, I'm so out of it. <laughs> I apologize. I'm like a little bit all over the place. First and foremost... <laughs> I'm hungry. It is one o'clock. I have not had a single thing to eat all day. So maybe this is like hunger craziness happening. Secondly, I'm also on my menstrual cycle. So my hormones have been doing a lot. I have been all over the place up and down. I like almost cried yesterday for no reason. I'm also in a lot of pain and I haven't taken any like ibuprofen or Advil or anything because I haven't eaten and I don't want to take it on an empty stomach. This is probably TMI, but y'all are here, so I'm gonna tell y'all anyways <laughs> about it because I have nobody else to talk to. Is this a sign of craziness? I am talking to myself. No, I'm not talking to myself. Oh my gosh, this video is gonna be a mess, but we're just gonna keep going. Okay, anyways, what y'all came here for, the video. If you saw from the thumbnail and the title, I'm gonna be doing my empties today. So I've been trying to not let like, my, my empties get to be too much because then I spend a long time doing these videos. So I have my empties from February and March. Yes. I need to eat because I don't know what day it is, what month it is. So I have all of the products here in this empty Ulta bag. What is my camera focusing on? Oh, it's focusing on this, okay. So I have all of the products here in this empty Ulta bag. I'm just gonna go in, pull them out one by one. And you guys know how I like to do with these videos. So basically I'm gonna let you guys know how I feel about the product, whether I would or would not repurchase it and where you can get it at a discount. Most of the products, if not all of my makeup and skincare, I get it at a discount. I don't believe in paying full price for this stuff. I don't think you should either. So I like to share with you all the best way to get these products at the best deal because most or pretty much all of these tend to be some high-end luxury finds. Okay, so the first thing I have here is this Clean It Zero Cleansing Water. Now this is a micellar water from the Vanilla & Co company. I've talked about their cleansing balm which I love. I absolutely love that cleansing balm. I think it's better than the Clinique cleansing balm and it's a fraction of the price. Now the micellar water left a little bit to be desired. I have used other micellar waters, mainly the Simple brand, and I think that one is just so much better. So I wouldn't recommend repurchasing this. The only reason that I have this is that I got it as a part of a kit. Did I? Yes. No. Mm -mm. No you didn't girl. Did I? I didn't. I bought this by itself. I had to. This wasn't a part of a kit. I did purchase another kit that came with a cleansing balm and a face wash. That was in a kit. This was not. <laughs> but I bought this by itself. I picked this up, I remember, at my TJ Maxx store. So I got it at a discount and for the price that I paid for it, I think it was nice. But this isn't something that I would be willing to go back to Ulta to pick up at an Ulta store. Now if I saw it at the TJ Maxx, I also don't think that I would pick it up again because it was just okay, and I know that I prefer the other, like the simple brand, but I think it just does a better job. And when it comes to taking off my makeup, I need my face to be stripped. I don't want it to have any residue, and I'm not saying stripped to the point of like it's gonna be dry. I'm saying stripped to the point of like I've gotten all of the product off of my face, so my face is clean. I don't want old makeup, mascara, eyeshadow, any of that sitting on my face, sinking into my pores, clogging my pores. None of that. So that. Eh, wouldn't repurchase it, wouldn't recommend you pick it up. I think the simple one is better and probably around the same price or even cheaper and more accessible because you can get it at, I feel like I've more consistently seen it at TJ Maxx and Marshall stores at a discount, but also it's readily available at like Target, Walmart, Ulta and all these other places. So long-winded, but you all know where I'm going with this. Okay, the next product that I have is the Ultra Repair Moisturizer from First Aid Beauty. If this is your first time watching me, Welcome, I love this. This is my holy grail moisturizer. I have been using this for 
almost as long as I have been in the United States, which is a little over a decade. <laughs> if you didn't know, I'm an immigrant. So when I came to the US, um, this was one of the first products that became a very consistent product in my skincare routine. It is $24, well, I think it's 28 now because inflation. Um, but when I, I remember it being $24. So it's a daily moisturizer, it's extremely lightweight. First Aid Beauty as a skincare brand is one of those brands that I recommend all the time because it's simple, non-comedogenic, non-fussy, no fragrances, nothing. It just sinks into the skin and it's excellent on sensitive skin. Like all of these First Aid Beauty products that I've tried tend to just like sit on my skin in a nice way where I don't feel any tingling or irritation or anything like that. And this is one of those that if you have oily skin, you don't have to worry about it being so hydrating that your skin overproduces oil. I found that this really sinks into the skin and it really allows makeup to sit on top of it very nicely. So it's one that I always go back to and one that I, you know, keep repurchasing even while I'm trying other brands. Now, sometimes you can get this on sale for 50% off. I've never seen this one at TJ Maxx though. I have seen several first DVD products at TJ Maxx, but never this one. I don't know if there's a reason because this just sells really good and it never ends up in the TJ Maxx stores. But this moisturizer has never been at my TJ Maxx, but you can oftentimes get it on sale at like your Ulta stores or like the Face Beauty website. Okay, next up is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. I like this one. Hear me out. I have talked about this being orange and it is. It's an orange foundation. Now, I just assume that it's because... A lot of brands, when it comes to deeper skin tones, their foundations tend to lean pretty orange if they're saying it's a warm foundation. Now, is there probably a better shade match for me? Maybe. There might be a like neutral leaning one that has a little bit less orange in it that I could try that would work for me better. So in terms of the orangeness, I could probably fix that by finding another shade. The formula of this, that's what I mean by I like this foundation. This is an amazing formula, especially for people that are oily and want something that's matte, but not too matte. Because while I will start to see my oils peeking through at the end of the day, it's not to the point where it's like overly mattifying and then my skin overproduces oils. So this is one that I recommend if you're able to find a shade that matches you really well um, and if you have oily leaning skin and you want to be matte. It's actually one of the foundations that I recommended in a previous video, like the best matte foundations, especially for the oily girls, the ones that need something a little bit more matte for the summer. So I would still recommend it because the formula is great. Just be careful about the shade because a lot of times their warm shades are very orange, which we are not Oompa Loompas and we don't accept that. Okay, let's get this other holy grail out of the way. This is the Clinique Moisture Surge Hydrating Serum. This is uh, tried and true in my routine. This is also a product that I've been using for, I want to say, six, maybe seven years. <laughs> so almost a decade. It is just a great hydrating serum to put on your face before anything else. Now, when it came to me moving into trying or using more acne products, especially prescription and grade acne products, what started happening was that my skin was getting really, really dry. Now, I am generally someone that is kind of oily, especially in their T-zone. So when my face started drying up, I was like, say what? And it's always weird when you have oily skin, but then you get dry patches because it feels like very counterintuitive because your skin is still oily, but you're getting these dry patches. So... What I did was I added a hyaluronic acid serum into my skincare routine. Now, I do think that some hyaluronic acid serums, like the ones from The Ordinary, can be really, really thick, so I don't use it during the morning. So I needed something that was a little bit lighter so that I could put it on in the morning, not have me looking super greasy, that it would sink into the skin, and that it would allow me to put other products on top of it, specifically my makeup. Because if my base is already too oily and greasy and hydrated and shiny, that means I am going to be a glazed donut all day. And nobody wants that, especially not me. So I needed something that sank in and that would not have me overly greasy during the day. So this is what I found and this is what I've been using ever since. I have at least five of these in my backup drawer. I have enough to last me like half a year. I go through about one a month of those and it's just, I haven't found anything to replace it. It works. My skin hasn't gotten to the point where it's just not effective. It just still works and it's been working for the past six, seven years. So... It will forever be in my routine as long as it continues to do what it's been doing these past years. 
Okay, a next product on the hydrating side of things is this hyaluronic acid from Good Molecules. Now this is a really, really nice one. I talked about the Ordinary's hyaluronic acid serum being too thick. This one is less thick than that and I think just sinks into the skin better and faster than the one from The Ordinary. So I actually, several years ago now, switched out my Ordinary serum for this one because I just think that this is a better formulation. I think that because it sinks into the skin faster, it makes my nighttime routine go faster. With the, the Ordinary Serum, I felt like, you know, it took a minute or two for that to sink in and I'd have to wait for that to really soak into my skin before I could start adding my other serums and the other products that I would put into my nighttime routine. And this one didn't do that. Now this one is also light enough that I could use it in the morning and during the winter when my skin felt like it needed the most hydration. Sometimes I would actually go in with this above this one. So if you have um, either a more oily leaning skin and you want something that just sinks in a little bit better, I think you would actually really like this. I've really enjoyed it. I do think it comes in a bigger size too and I believe this small one is $6 so hey, cha-ching. Um, so in terms of cost and price, definitely one that I would recommend. I will definitely be picking up a backup of that one. I'm using the Hyaluronic Acid Serum from LYS right now and when that one is done, even though I think it's a nice one, I do want to switch back to the Ordinaries one. So I won't replace just the LYS one. I do think it's nice, but I'm going to go back to this one once that one is done and get the bigger size in this. Question before we get back into the rest of the products. Are you a hangry person? Like me, when I'm hungry, I get angry. Like I'm not an angry person generally. There are a few, and I mean very few things that phase me or get me to the point of being mad. And I'm the type of person that when I get mad, I can't be mad for very long because what you're not going to do is upset my spirit for too much. I don't like to let things fester. I don't like to like things control my mood that much. So I get over things like very quickly. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I just, I'm very quick to like either we fi like fix it and move on and just like, let's not sit in this. So that's how I am. But hungry me gets angry. Like <laughs> it's not nice. I am like a very far from nice person when I am hungry. Huh. Are you, are you hungry? I just want to know. Now I'm curious. Okay, let's keep going. So, oh, let's start with this cleanser. So I have this oil, um, this, it's called the Oil Control Cleanser from Ula Herxon. Now Ula Herxon is a like well-known skincare brand. I feel like it's a little bit overpriced and it doesn't do that much in my opinion. I feel like I've never gotten anything super special from it um for what they charge now granted all of my ula hendrickson i've gotten from tj maxx so i have not paid ula hendrickson prices which i am glad about because i would not pay ula hendrickson prices now this oil control cleanser i don't think i liked it first of all it had a, almost like mint to it like it had a very minty smell and i felt like it made my skin tingle and one thing i don't like is feeling my skin tingle because now I feel like I'm actually harming my skin. It was just probably too strong for my skin. And I will say that after using it, my skin felt stripped. It felt like I had sucked all of the life out of my skin. Now it does say oil control, so I can't say that it didn't warn me that it's the type of product that works best for oily skin. So that was probably my own fault. I needed to figure that shit out on my own. Um, but I do have an oily leaning T-zone, so I thought it would be fine because, you know, I want to get the oils out of my oily parts of the face, but just generally it did not work. And because my T-zone is so close to like the most sensitive parts of my face, my eyes and whatnot, and you know, the area under your eyes is like super sensitive, I just felt like it was very uncomfortable for me, so I wouldn't repurchase it. But if you are looking for Ola Hendrickson, please check out your TJ Maxx stores. They have tons of them they have that green line they have the orange line as well so you can oftentimes find a lot there even that blue line the dark blue you can find a lot of look henderson at your tj maxx and marshall stores okay next up i have this formula 10.6 skin clarifying mud mask this i think is okay i think that this is a nice mud mask it does like the same kind of thing as a clay mask where it kind of like dries out everything sucks supposedly sucks all the gunk out of your pores um and i feel like most clay masks do the same thing i found very few that tend to be like stella where it feels like they're not doing every something like everything else the teamy mask is one that i do think stands out and is extremely stella and i think has had the most like visible effects when it comes to clay mask this one i think is nice this one i thought was good when i you know I would always reach for like my clay and mud mask when my skin 
had like a lot of acne breakouts because then I felt like my skin needed a cleanse. So I would reach for something like this to use. The thing about these formula masks is that they have a high fragrance. Like the amount of perfume in here, and I'm looking to see where this is. It's at, it's technically at the bottom of the ingredients list here. So I, f I feel like it shouldn't be that strong, but I felt like the fragrance in this was so strong, yeah. And this has strawberry and yarrow, and you can smell the strawberry scent on this. Oh yeah, it has a very, very strong strawberry scent. Um, interesting though, now looking at the ingredients list, it does have salicylic acid, which is always great for um, acne prone skin, especially if you get sort of those um, little white head type of acne that, that can easily pop. Not necessarily helpful for sal um, cystic acne, which is my issue, but really great if you just have regular acne. Okay, so I have two prescription products that I figured I'd just show you guys um, in case you were curious as to like my, what I use for my acne um, or what I'm prescribed for my acne. So first up, I have the tretinoin cream. I know that this is very, very um, common. I know a lot of people are on tretinoin. Uh, tretinoin is great for um, acne texture, helping to sort of address some of the issues that come along with acne, like, you know, the scarring and all of that. So I have, that has been like a huge product in my regime for several years. I'd say about like four, almost five years, tretinoin has been, maybe five years, I'd say five years, tretinoin has been a key ingredient or product in my skincare routine. So much so that I'm using like the highest percentage, which is 0.1%. Now, because I was on tretinoin, it does dry out your skin. It does take a little bit for your skin to get used to it. I do think that people that are typically coming into using tretinoin, they have to like work their way up to that large of a percentage and do a lot to make sure that their skin is hydrated because it does dry it out. So that was, you know, what I was dealing with. Now, I have since switched to um, dermatologists um, and have gotten a new r routine, which I think is great because like when you've been on something for such a long time, I think your skin does get pretty used to it. So now I'm on a Razlo, which is a lot more gentle on my skin and I experience a lot less dry dryness issues. So that is what I'm using now at night and I do have a daytime topical. Now I'm not gonna like linger on those because like I said, they're prescription, which means that in order to get it, you have to be prescribed it. But I did wanna point those out because those are just kinda like staple products that I go through or you know continue to go through because they are like parts of my routine and that's one thing that i want to like flag about my skincare my skincare routine is that while i do use a lot of over-the-counter products most i would say of my progress can be attributed to like working with professionals and them giving me uh like prescription gate products that have helped in addition to those topicals there was a point where i was on antibiotics i actually have two oral medications right now that i'm using for my acne so you know, some skincare can be, issues can be resolved with over-the-counter products, but depending on the severity of your issues, you may need to, like, be in contact with an esthetician or a dermatologist and get more um, stronger um, products that can more better address some of your issues. Okay, so I have, like, a bunch of little things that we're going to just kind of, like, speed go through. Because that's pretty much it for, like, I have a bunch of little things that are kind of like deluxe size products that I want to go through. Okay, so the first thing that I have is the ABH Brow Wiz Pencil. This is a tried and true. I just think that this is one of the standout products in the beauty community that has worked, continues to work, and is kind of what a lot of other brow pencils get measured up against. That and the benefit. Um, I do have a bunch of these because they typically come out on sale during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, which is when I tend to stock up. So I have a bunch of those. Um, I would continue to repurchase them, especially since they are oftentimes on sale for 50% off during the Ulta 21 Days sale. So I recommend it. Definitely wait for one of those big sales that comes up. And yeah, it's a bomb.com product. Uh, then I have this eyeshadow base from Colored Rain. This is in the shade Wheat. I also have this in the darker shade. The darker shade is a little too deep for me to actually use as a base because it's darker than my complexion. Um, so it looks kind of crazy. <laughs> but as I am not sure I like that base. It, it, one, doesn't wash off of your brushes at all. So, like, when I use, like, 
a base I tend to like put it on and then take a brush and like use it to smear it over the lid and it doesn't wash off I don't know why it's weird um does it do a good job as a base yeah sure but I could also get the same effect with like concealer so it's not necessary if we're being honest but it's an okay base it's fine I have no issues with it I just don't think I would replace it and it's not the most easily accessible you know color drain is I don't think it's in any stores you'd have to buy from the website it's too much to have to worry about shipping and all that stuff. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't buy it again. I think that they're just better options and more accessible options. And from what I can tell, people are still waiting on the Safari palette. Okay, colored rain. <laughs> okay, so I do have this little deluxe size of the Milk Hydra Grip Primer. I used to have a full size of this. I used to really like it. Where I'm at now, I don't think I care for it anymore. I feel like it's an okay primer. It's fine. But it's not one that I feel like I need to run out and repurchase, especially after having used that deluxe size. I'm like, I remember when that was it. I remember when that was the primer. Now I'm like, eh, meh, don't really need it or care for it. What I do care for, though, is this Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. Yo, I got this little baby deluxe size in this like free hourglass gift it also came with a little mini size hourglass powder but that primer blurred perfected mattified i want a full size of that that is actually on my wish list i want to get a full size of that so bad because it's so darn cute but yes i love this i will probably purchase it during like a sephora vib sale or something like that or if hourglass has a sale because it's actually a really solid primer uh for my skin type i was really surprised that it totally threw me off talking about things that threw me off the hourglass unlocked instant extensions mascara also really good this was a part of that free kit that i got too those hourglass products are bomb.com i'm also wearing the hourglass foundation right now and this is a really nice foundation i didn't realize hourglass had it like that i know people talk about the ambient powders um all the time and that's what they're known for but they have some banging products outside of that and the mascara if i didn't believe in paying less than ten dollars for mascara i would repurchase that mascara in a heartbeat it is so darn good and if i could get it on a sale like a solid sale i would actually buy it because it's actually really solid mascara but I just don't believe in paying all that money for a mascara. I think you can get so many good options for cheaper. So that's, you know, what holds me back from buying that mascara. But it's a nice one. But these two, definitely I am interested in picking up full sizes of them. And then we have a bunch of mascaras. Actually, wait, I, I do have a brow thing. So I have this Merit Brow Gel. Uh, I really like this. I was like scraping the edges of this. I didn't want to empty this because it's such a good one. Is it overpriced? Yes, but it's really nice. I kind of want it. If Merit has a decent sale, I would probably repurchase that. They don't tend to have a lot of sales. I think they have one sale a year and it's like 20% off. But if they have a sale, I would probably repurchase it. Oh, I might just use like a 20, the 20% 20 off the Sephora VIB seal to get it because it's actually a really nice brow gel. It's really good, especially for those no makeup makeup days. The one thing about Merit is that they are uh, that kind of like simple clean girl vibes so all of their makeup is like light barely their makeup and that brow gel even though it has a tint to it what it does is it holds your brows gives you a little bit of tint so you end up with some color and some shape but it just looks natural so it's not that like full-blown like i'm like in full glam look it's a very sort of natural look which i appreciate because it's one of those things where if you were just like i need to run to the grocery store and i just want to throw on some gloss you can do that with it. So that's why I appreciate that one and might pick it back up. Okay, I have a bunch of mascaras to run through for you guys and then this video is done. So first up, I have this Marc Jacobs uh, At Lashed Mascara. This is actually a solid one. It's nice. I don't know what's going on with Marc Jacobs, so let's not dwell on it. Got this at TJ Maxx and I've seen a couple of them pop up. Um, it's fine. Then I have this deluxe size of the NARS Climax Mascara. Uh, don't really care for this one. It was very unmemorable, I think. I think it was nice, but also, like, nothing to write home about. Again, don't pay more than $10 for a mascara. And quite frankly, you can pay just five. Um, I have a bunch of these because I either got them as, like, free gifts from, like, uh, Ulta or, like, found it at Sephora at, like, drugstore prices, which is why I picked it up. Uh, this was a free gift in something. This is the, or a part of a kit this is the MAC mascara. I don't know what this is called. This is actually really nice for getting into the lower lash line, um, which is what I was using it for. I never really used it for the upper lashes because 
it didn't coat them well enough to give you volume um, unless you were like going for forever but because the bristles in it are so fine it was really really good for the lower lash line like you can't really see how tiny those little bristles are but they're really tiny to get into like the individual lashes of the lower lash line but not great for giving you volume in the upper part uh, this Ma Pat McGrath fetish eyes I don't think I like this. I feel like this was flaky as hell. And I know a lot of people like this mascara, but I was just like, Patricia. No, ma'am. Same with this Tower 28 mascara. The flakes, y'all, the flakes. I was just like, and this is like half full still because it just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. This went viral on TikTok and it was just, I can't. It just doesn't do anything for me other than flake and get into my eyeball and irritate my eyes. So no ma'am <laughs> anyways that is it for me guys those were all of my empties for february and march ton of great products not some not so great ones but i'm really glad that i'm continuing to use up my products um a lot less makeup except for like a bunch of mascaras that i had to either empty or declutter i'm trying to like not have too many open at the same time um but i'm working through a bunch of other products so hopefully we'll have more makeup the next go around and of course you know i love my skincare so that will always be there <laughs> if you guys like this video go ahead and hit that like button don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on your way out ring that notification bell if you never want to miss an upload from me i upload two to three times a week most of the time doing my best you guys um but it's never on a consistent schedule because your girl works a nine to five okay so when i can i will <laughs> but i try to give you guys at least one one or two videos a, a week minimum um as always i appreciate you so very much thank you guys so much for watching for hanging with me spending some time with me today i will catch you guys in my next one bye